Doug, <laughs> I'm going to need your help. Can you pronounce that again? Do it. Kizilelma. Bayraktar Kizilelma. But There we go. Uh, okay, yes. Well, here's their drone. <laughs> Advances as Turkey's first unmanned fighter jet with successful flight tests. I say drone, but unmanned fighter jet. So there is actually a cool video right here. It's only a minute. Yeah, see it? That's great. Look at this thing, man. Nozzles are all... Yeah. Taxi. Look at that set right on the center line. So it just... So the big news is it, it just did its first flight. You think Wait. it sent that video to China? Right off the wing? Dude, That's how it took its selfie? The Chinese, the Chinese are probably at the field, man. <laughs> so, uh, first flight, gear down, pretty standard. Comes back. Check out this. Thing. Whoa. At first Whoa. I was, yeah. At Whoa. first I was like, uh oh. <laughs> uh, we they might have an 811. Correct. Yeah, we might leave some pieces of this. Oh, but fire. look at that. They flared it yes, off. Dude, look at they that. It. Look at that. Exactly. The music so is it, perfect. Oh, is look. The they even synced it to the music. Yeah, I can't hear any music, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See the little air brakes pop out? Yeah, yeah there it is. There's well, that the... was the canards. That was the canards. Um, yeah, exactly. So. Absolutely. So yeah, man, they did the first flight of this thing. It's uh, I guess it's more than a drone. It's going to be a fighter. The improvements they have uh, in the future, they're going to put an engine with the afterburner in it, which will make it even faster. So the way it's the way it is now, yeah. So it's got a ISA. Uh, here's the crazy thing, man. We talked about how crappy our acquisition program is. Look at this. Look at this, man. When was this project initiated? 2021, right? They're already flying a prototype. Well, oh, in fairness, we're flying a prototype T7. It's just <laughs> how many years? Have we <laughs> Lots of right. people take that long. They're called doctors. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be pretty awesome. It's like like we we're saying, it's got the uh, Asa. It it can go and this and the current with the current engine, man, it can do a uh, 0.9 Mach up to wow. operational 25,000 feet, service ceiling 35,000 feet. I think carry. Uh, it has a pretty good bomb load. I think it's like two thousand. All kilograms. internal. Ooh, I didn't. It did not say that. Uh, but mm. it's about a fifteen thousand pound fighter or drone. Wow! So, so it doesn't take much to get more than a one to one. It's kind of a right that the fifteen. I remember the Gosshawk, the T forty five was fifteen thousand. T thirty eight was around twelve five. Right. So I mean, it's right in that. Yeah. Probably like T seven size kind of kind of fighter. So. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, man, if this is they integrate this thing with Khan, right? Kind of get their own loyal wingman going. But I thought it was, I mean, I think it's a pretty cool looking fighter. What do you think, Moover, after watching that video? Yeah, I am curious as to what their use case is for it. Like, what do they see it as the export in addition to their own? But, but in a tactical environment are oh. they thinking loyal wingman are they thinking you know you put a dozen of these and do dca without any pilots uh you know because they've got the con how does it integrate in the bigger picture because it's cool by itself right we're, we're we're showing that does it have ai you know are they thinking it's going to integrate some ai like we're doing with the f-16 uh in those tests i'm curious what the next step is going to be because a uh, I mean, it looks very capable with the ESA. It's probably going to have greater than a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio. It's going to be maneuverable with the canards, um, single engine. But what? How do they see it in the battle space? Yeah, how they how do they plan to employ it? That's right. a good question, man. But I think, in fairness, I kind of think we're all trying to figure that one out. Uh, we, you know, we're not going to talk about it, but the uh, what the Congressional Review of the NGAD they talked mm -hmm. about that. They talked about there was two questions. Going digging in memory here, it, it is: Do you want to build a machine for air superiority, or do you want to build a six-gen fighter? They're two different questions, right? Yeah. So I think you know, and, and the basically the crux of that whole article to Congress was: It's clear to me. I read it like they're not sure kind of which way to go here. So I'm sure in Turkey, they're probably struggling with the same with the same dilemma. You have, but this is true with any new weapon right i mean it's first it's a technology demonstrator like the f-16 when it first came out right. right and then it's like well what do we what do we do with all this cool stuff you know and then well they... uh, dude i mean think about it 
from an operator perspective. I love the idea of me sitting back in the con, potentially low RCS, you know, lower RCS, sending that thing downrange with an ESA, and it's telling me, you know, it is soaking up missiles. It's telling me what's downrange. It's causing the enemy to react way farther than I need to be. Yeah, you know, it's your dumb wingman that hubcaps you. You know, it because yeah. it's expendable. Uh, yeah. It can drop bombs if it gets close enough. You know, I mean, dude, the the tactical implications of it are, are pretty good, especially if they can create many of them. And I think we need to kind of go back to give them credit. I mean, assuming that this becomes a full fledged program like you were talking about, uh, as far as giving them credit, they are ramping up their defense industry. I mean, Turkey oh, yeah. is becoming a player. We talked about them doing uh, the deal or trying to do the deal with the Saudis. Yep. We we've talked about the Khan's first flight and and how quickly that happened between them and the South Koreans. South Koreans are kind of the same way. Right. You know, other countries are starting to ramp up their research and development, their production, and we'll see if they can sustain it. You know, because but the key thing that always seems to come back is engines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so that, like every, every time we talk about one of these things, it's like, well, they got this engine, but later they'll have this engine. It seems like engines always seems to be the hang up. Yeah, so they're they are de developing another engine with Afterburner. So the current engine they're using in it is a it's a Ukrainian engine. And I, I can't remember I can't remember the model, but you're right. That that's one of the one of the things they plan on uh you know upgrading. Is the engine and the engine is super important, right? I mean, it's got to be efficient, it's got to be powerful, lightweight. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of kind of a tall order, right? Yeah, no, but cool, good for them though. Yeah.